You're listening to the Monday Market Highlights brought to you by Milford. Good morning. It's Monday the 12th of December and I'm Kate from Milford. Last week, the Australian GDP data print showed the economy grew by 0.6% in the third quarter this year and 5.9% annually. Consumption was the key driver of economic activity, with consumers reluctant to adjust spending levels despite rising cost pressures. Per capita GDP growth saw the weakest increase outside of COVID lockdowns this quarter. Employee compensation was up 3.2% in the quarter, and household savings is still above pre-COVID levels. The RBA raised the cash rate by 25 basis points this week, in line with market expectations. This brings the cash rate to 3.1%. The RBA won't meet again until February next year. Moving offshore, in the US, the Consumer Credit Report showed US consumers continue to fund spending with credit, with an increase in credit outstanding of $27 billion, which is in line with the pace of increases over the previous three months. It shows spending is supported by borrowing, but illustrates saving levels must be close to exhaustion. In the UK, November housing data showed UK house prices are really starting to fall, with a 2.3% decline month on month. This is the biggest monthly fall outside of the GFC, going back to 1980. However, house prices are still up year on year. Credit card data in the UK showed spending was up 3.9% year on year in November. Consumer confidence also ticked up, although the view of personal finances deteriorated. In the US, ISM services print in November was better than expected at 56.5, highlighting its resilience and that the Fed has more work to do to curb inflation. Finally, on economic news, US annual PPI declined to 7.4% in November from 8.1% last month. This was as expected. Turning to equity news, Nitro Software received another takeover bid from Potentia Capital, increasing its offer to $2 a share from $1.80. Pathology service provider Helios announced the sale of its day hospital portfolio for $138 million to Nexus Hospitals. The proceeds of the sale will be used to strengthen their balance sheet and support the group as they reset their cost base. The group has also announced the CEO is stepping down and to be replaced by the group's current CFO. Air New Zealand provided a strong trading update last week. They upgraded their first half 2023 profit before tax guidance by 31%, which was predominantly driven by yields holding up stronger than expected and a benefit from lower fuel prices recently. However, no full year guidance was provided. Looking to the week ahead, we can expect the US inflation print this week, which is expected to soften slightly from the previous reading of 6.3 core CPI and 6.6% total CPI. This will be a key input for the US Federal Reserve's interest rate decision. The markets expect the Fed to raise rates by 50 basis points at the December meeting on Wednesday, which is a step down from the large 75 basis point hikes at recent meetings. Later in the week, US retail sales data will be released, which is expected to fall 0.1% month on month. Moving to the UK, their CPI print will be released as well as the Bank of England's interest rate decision, which is expected to increase 50 basis points to 3.5%. In New Zealand, the third quarter GDP growth rate will be released, which is expected to increase by 1% year on year. And finally, in Australia, look out for the unemployment rate release. Last month's reading was 3.4% and is forecast to increase to 3.6% in December. Thank you for listening throughout the year and we hope you enjoy the holiday period ahead.